there. Welcome. Welcome to Home Keepers. How are you today, my friend? Why don't you grab yourself a cup of tea and join me today? We're going to have a wonderful program and very informative. Uh, if you watched the last one, my guest was uh, Elizabeth Melendez Fisher Good. Quite a, quite a name there, right? And uh, she is an expert and knows the ins and outs of human trafficking. In fact, um, she recently was at the White House and uh, President Trump, thankfully, is going to try to attack it. I have read uh, statistics that the United States of America is the worst in human trafficking. And that was a surprise to me because, you know, long time we thought of ourselves as a Christian nation and we need to be very, very much aware of what's going on and human trafficking is very big in the United States. So I'm thankful that people like Elizabeth are yeah, they're on it and the president as well. And uh, joined Stephanie, we're going to fix black bean quesadillas. And if you're kind of a vegetarian type and all, this would be a good one for you. I remember the first time we had quesadillas on this program was with John Hagee's wife, Diana, and she uh, taught us how to make them. Uh, these, uh, I think you can do either way. You could put them in the oven or we could, uh, you could just kind of fry them. But um, We'll put it together for you. Uh, before I join Stephanie, though, let me remind you, we are viewer supported. And I want to thank you so much, so much for all you do. Um, Wanda's been away for a few days, so I've been opening the mail. And I sincerely want to thank you for the donations you send in and all of your sweet notes and all. It's a great, great encouragement. So if you use your credit card, there's an 800 number there on your screen, 1-800-229-0059, or the address is Box 6922, and that's in Clearwater, Florida, 33758. So thank you in advance. And um, here's Stephanie. Uh, she's feeling better. She's really, you've gone through some pain issues here. Yeah, I'm good. Did you ever tell them how you hurt your back? It you doesn't didn't? matter. I think it's an interesting <laughs> story. No, we're okay. Sometimes you just have to use wisdom, okay? That's all. And I didn't. Well, she was trying to be a boy and do heavy lifting. And so you decided you're a girl, I'm right? I'm a girl. Okay. Ain't so going to do it anymore. Won't be going to do it anymore. I okay. love quesadillas. Now, I do, I too. I know we do them often, but mm -hmm. it, it's just a nice reminder that you can do something like this. It's tasty, it's easy, and it's frugal. Yeah, and it's healthy. <laughs> and it's healthy. Um, and you can take a lot of liberty with it. Yeah, Put and I get low-carb um, tortillas at uh -huh. the store, so that would even add another level mm -hmm. of taking mm -hmm. away carbs. Mm -hmm. Okay, so super easy. You're going to spray aluminum foil pan. I mm -hmm. have a half a cup of black beans that are rinsed and drained. I have some green onions that are chopped. I have one of my favorite things, cilantro, which is a love-hate. Either you love cilantro or you hate it. But I like I it. I like it a lot. I love it. When we went to, we went on a cruise to Mexico, and we went on one of those tours or something like that, and they, they fed us, and it was the, it was so cilantro-y. Mm -hmm. It was so good. And then we have cumin. So we're well, just now, do, when you do them at home, do you fry them or do you bake them? I fry them, mm -hmm. but I see, now that I see this, I may bake them because mm -hmm. this looks a lot easier, mm -hmm. and you can do two at a time and or four, you know, you four need at these a time. To, on here? Yeah, so one on two of those two. down, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna put cheese down. We're gonna put this on, and then we're gonna put cheese on top, and that'll be the glue that holds it all together. The, I mean, and it's this super simple. You could go anywhere with these mm -hmm. ingredients. You could do all veggies. If you, you could do breakfast. Never had one. Mm -hmm. There's no way to just I mean, adequately describe how good they you taste. Whatever you like, mm -hmm. you put on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start with cheese mm -hmm. on both of them. And then I'm going to put the mixture I just did, which is, smells so cilantro. Yes, it does. It smells so good. And then for the toppings, we have sour cream, salsa, and more cilantro. And um, that's not she made up a new word. Cilantro e, cilantro e. Yes, that's my my new word. Mm -hmm. So we're just gonna fill these up here, and of course you can you know add you know double, triple the ingredients and make as many as you as you mm -hmm. need. But I guarantee you, teenagers would yes. love this with all of their different little favorite whatever they like inside, and they can make their own. 
You think uh, they'd like a little taco seasoning? Oh in it, maybe? yeah, for sure. I mean, you could go hamburger, you could go chicken, you could go sausage, you could, you can go anywhere with it. Whatever you want. It's your house, your room, yes. your food. And uh, you're the boss of the kitchen. Yeah, and so then we put the other two on top. Unless your husband does the cooking. And you know, I know a couple uh, people I've met recently, their husbands do the cooking. Well, you know, my husband's going to retire in November. So he's going to do the cooking. <laughs> so I said, hmm, someone needs to learn how to cook because Mama ain't going to work all day and then come home and cook. He said, I would love to. So we're trying to so, start now. We're, we're, we're doing little lessons now so that he learns. Oh, that's very cool, So girl. you put the top on. It's The oven's at 450, 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. And wait until you see how beautiful these are. Yes. Look, at, and this is my lunch today. I have not eaten yet today. Perfect. So you are looking at my lunch. Yes. Perfect. So I can't wait to try it. Let, let me clear out my mess here. Ooh, they're nice and warm. Oh, and so crispy. That's why I like the baking, I think. Mm -hmm. Man, that came out super mm -hmm. crispy. Mm -hmm. So I'll take this and this and cut off a little or bit. Or you I could pick it up just like a sandwich, too. You could. If you're not but refined. I'll be, yes, but I'll be refined and ladylike mm -hmm. today because Lord go. knows we've had enough shots of me not being. <laughs> and I'm going to get a little taste. I'm going to put a little uh, sour cream yeah. on here, and I'll let you know how... Mm -hmm. I mean, I could do it. I'll do it all for lunch, but for right yeah. now, I'll just do this. Just, just do the sour cream. I'm the taste tester today. <gasps> mm. Is it good? It's just so good. It would rival a Mexican restaurant. Mm hmm It's that good. So, oh. uh, as you know, our recipes are free. There's information coming up on your screen, and you choose the way you want to get it, whatever's most convenient for you. And then, uh, if you didn't see Elizabeth on the last program, you'll get to meet her today because I talked her into staying over. So this uh, interview is ready to roll and you're going to learn a lot from her. So pick out your recipe venue and we'll be right back. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, you may receive it by contacting us through social media as listed on the screen. When requesting a copy through the mail, be sure to include a self-addressed stamped envelope. Thank you, and please know we always appreciate hearing from our viewers. All right, Elizabeth, thank you for hanging around. <laughs> uh, there's so much to talk about on this book, uh, brand new, it's called Groomed. And Elizabeth Melendez Good Fisher is with me. And we're going to uh, keep her websites up, talking about human trafficking, as we did on the last program. I had so many notes we didn't get to them, so well, here we go. Um, various types of grooming, and you say appearances, yeah. and there's a lot of that on the internet, where the, a young girl, you know, 12 years old, thinks her body's not right, so she starves herself. Uh, be invisible. Right. Yeah. I, I know that. Judgmental, mm -hmm. and churches can do that. Financial fear. And endurance, you're supposed to endure anything. That's besides the yeah. sexual Yeah, that's uh, what it is. It's so much more. But mm -hmm. what, what's great about the book is for the person that's like, because how many people are, I don't want to hear about trafficking. That's too difficult. Mm -hmm. But, oh, no, here's the book about the way women have been groomed. And it's all mm -hmm. about, you know, you're in mm -hmm. being invisible or being too strong. They'll read that. Mm -hmm. But then in it, they get the education mm -hmm. and learn. And uh, on the last program, we talked about the vast amount, the thousands and thousands mm -hmm of women who um, were molested or raped or something and they they've put a lid on it and one thing that really grabbed my heart was uh, the women that come to you from 70 to 90 years old yeah. that kept that secret because that generation Older. they're not supposed to talk oh yeah every time that we speak I mean I will I go to churches around the country different venues and there will always be somebody and there's a line usually of people that come up but there's always somebody between that 70 and 95 mm -hmm. that I mean, just streaming with tears. Mm -hmm. I've never told anyone, mm -hmm. thank you for what you do. And I'm like, oh, that they held it that whole time. Yeah, and the, I remember a time uh, when, well, they won't take you seriously and all this. But I saw a program with Oprah Winfrey many years ago, and the whole audience was men who had been molested. Right. And their stories were just identical. Oh, yeah. And it's, you know, don't tell anybody, we'll kill your parents, or they won't believe you. If not you, I'll thing. go to your little brother. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they get close-ups, and these men, it, it just broke my heart. Yeah. It, it spoke to me 
how serious this is. About, I mean, I believe it's Satan's greatest place he attacks, quite honestly, if he can't get us in the womb, right? Let's mm -hmm. get him as a child. Because if you attack somebody's sexuality, the root of their identity is just confused. Mm -hmm. And it's distorted in a man or a woman. Having this happen by someone that's supposed to be a protector, everything's upside down. So mm -hmm. you make the next thing to cover it up, and you're making the next decision out of confusion, and you are so far off of destiny. And that's why the book is really about mm -hmm. what is making us. We're not even the offenders. Why are we keeping the secret? Right. You know, it's got to get the good news out there. This Absolutely. is not your fault. This is yeah. not you. Yeah. And, and the good news is that nationwide it's going to be addressed because uh, President Trump is addressing it, but also in the state of Florida where we are, and both of us live here, uh, our governor is on top of it. Oh, yeah. And our attorney general, Ashley Moody, doing a great job. Very good. So mm -hmm. um, what about these girls that are trapped in this and they, they're not ready to leave it? They, I mean, anything, <laughs> yeah. anything can be habitual and a certain comfort zone. Right? I think that's what people don't understand. And I think that's why people want to dismiss this and, oh, well, it's a choice and they're making a choice and she's just a prostitute. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I've raised my, my children say, oh, there's no such thing as a prostitute, <laughs> just a girl with a story, mom, we know. Uh -huh. Because if you think about it, these girls and boys, if they were abused and they're little, their love is turned upside down. If they're running away from something abusive or lured into something abusive because they don't know any better, it again is framed in love. They really think that's why they call them mm -hmm. a Romeo pimp. We have a great PSA coming out in March and I oh, can't wait you? to share that with you because okay. I can't announce it yet, but we have been grooming our culture for, look for their Prince Charming, right? Mm -hmm. But our little kids are being groomed to not know the difference, especially if they've been flipped upside down. Mm -hmm. So when they run into the arms of these guys, they say a few words like, hey, I love you. Mm -hmm. I bet your parents didn't know how to love you. Are you hungry? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's simple. Mm -hmm. These girls, they just need provision. And then they believe, oh, I found my protection. I found my covering. Mm -hmm. And even when the guys start Safety. saying, hey, baby, I need you to just do this for me, mm -hmm. they're so used to being used in the wrong way that they're, okay, well, I guess that's what this is. And then when you say the stat of they're sold 15 to 40 times a day, it becomes their normal. Our girls, you well, sometimes we have to chase them for two years to help them believe they're worth it because they're like, oh, no, this is my boyfriend. I'm good. Yes, on the, on the last program we talked about that a pimp can get a, a, a young girl and, and use her 40 times a day. Yeah. And yeah. yet within that crazy, I call it craziness, yeah. which can brain. certainly happen, mm -hmm. um, it's hard for someone like you to extract her from that life. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. They're, they're bonded. It's that bond and whatever reason the name is eluding me right now. But they believe that this is what they're destined to be and that this is the choice that they're making and this is all they're worth and so they don't even think there's not all these images of chains and I'm like mm. that's really much more international here in America we're grooming our kids to run into the arms of these guys and to not believe they're worth being rescued because they think it's who they are are any young people being groomed that they're still living at home oh yeah really oh yeah Oh, yeah. I mean, I think that there's we have stories that go our, all over, right? Yeah, our homes are so sh yeah. shattered. Yeah, I mean, there's. I think the big thing, and I think the root of brokenness in America is what is happening with our families and what's happening with our community and coming together. It's everyone's fractured, and mm -hmm. you see, right? You talk about it probably all the time. At a dinner table, there's five people on separate phones, and no one's looking at mm -hmm. each other, no one's talking. Mm -hmm. So everybody's engaged in this entire portal that can go anywhere, and our children aren't given the proper boundaries and they're not given the proper community that they mm -hmm. need. And if they're longing for something, if there's a longing in their heart, even if they haven't been abused, somebody knows now how to just lure them in because we're grooming a culture of performing online. There's a website mm -hmm. when I was in D.C. that I just saw that I didn't even know about. And it's being added to our prevention now. It's live.com. And you could put a live camera on yourself 24 hours and Anybody can watch. So there's all of the, we opened it and there's all these children. They look like 11, 12, 13, and the guys could type notes. Oh, I like it. Bend like this. And then they're doing this. And then you find out they could PayPal them. So we are setting up these pathways for kids to feel yeah. like movie stars, right? Oh, I'm on camera. Oh, he's sending me money. He says I'm pretty. It's amazing to me what we have allowed and created to give our children self-worth. And online, that's where a lot of parents need to 
a lot like, of education. Because there are ways you can control their phones. All day long. They come preset to explicit. Mm -hmm. And unless a parent takes that and understands how you have to rework the settings mm -hmm. to make sure, you could set it to G. You could set it to PG-13. You could set it to, you know, there's... But no, it, co it comes. Comes preloaded explicit. Well, what, that's the phone company. That's the manufacturers. You ever wonder? Yeah. yeah. Oh, you're making me mad. I know. I, yes. Yes. We have a partner in D.C., um, National Center on Sexual Exploitation. And every year, about now, I think it's this week, they roll out the Dirty Dozen, mm -hmm. the top companies that are promoting exploitation. So check that out, N-C-O-S-E. <laughs> I know. If you just join me, I'm talking to Elizabeth Fisher about this wonderful new book, Groomed. You ought to be able to remember that title. And uh, she is one of the foremost, really, foremost uh, experts on human trafficking and thank God as I've shown you several times and on the last program it's getting a lot of press right now thank God for that pulling the curtain back on it um, no one in this room is as nearly as ignorant as I am with the cell phone but um, I have a grandson who is an expert mm -hmm. that's his job yeah. he's got three children they're my great-grandchildren he knows where they are every minute and what yeah. they're doing. And he knows, you know, he's got controls on those phones. Right. Well, I think the, the misconception and the myth that a lot of parents are buying in today is, oh, well, I don't want to invade their privacy. It's their phone. I don't want to. I'm like, are you kidding me? Like what you said on the earlier show. <laughs> I tell them, this is my phone. You are borrowing it. Yeah, <laughs> and in a moment, you're just borrowing it. I'll take fine. it back anytime. Yeah. These parents that think that they don't want to invade their children's privacy, they could be this close to being lured into running away. I've had girlfriends. I've had my, my oldest is now 20. She's in college. And she was a little more, you know, introverted, not out with billions of people all the time. And there was another girlfriend of mine raising a daughter, very, very similar. We, they didn't have boyfriends early. They were very mm -hmm. reserved. And my girlfriend called me one day. She said, I think my daughter needs sale of freedom. I'm like, what? What do you mean? And she said, I can't believe it. But there was something being kept a secret in their house. It wasn't sexual abuse, but there was something. So any secrets make our kids vulnerable. And then mm -hmm. when they're just looking for a safe place, someone to talk, right? Because mm -hmm. I'm keeping secrets over here. I could talk mm -hmm. to you. And this guy had been talking to her daughter. Her daughter thought it was a teenage boy. And for nine months, kept the secret, mm. sent him pictures. He kept luring her for more and more and more. And then finally he said, you know what? Get your passport. You're going to meet me. And she's like, only then, all the stuff we <laughs> warn our kids about. But he did the same thing. I'm going to ruin yeah. your mom's business. I'm going to show these photos everywhere. I'm going to make you look like this. Mm -hmm. But only at that point did she snap to it. But she was mm -hmm. already traumatized because she'd been sending naked photos for almost a year. Well, I'm glad that you're here and I'm glad there's such a, you know, just pulling the curtain back on it <laughs> in many ways. But um, I think that right now a lot yeah. of the viewers are just saying, I don't believe this, but it is as common <laughs> as it. Uh, right? <laughs> breakfast cereal. It's just yeah. absolutely common, and probably your kids could teach you a lot. Um, so I was talking about if the girl isn't ready to leave the life, and you know mm. what's going on, right. how do you break that down? Well, you know, the beautiful thing of the services that we launched, one of the great things is that we launched everything in Florida almost a decade ago. It's been nine mm -hmm. years. So this has been our, our what do you want to call our our focus group, right? We mm -hmm. did it all here, Trial created the best too, practices. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's like practicing in a smaller market and getting mm -hmm. everything worked out. And now we roll this model out nationally. The, the model that we have is even though a kid's been on the street, they don't feel that they, they don't even realize what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They don't know. And so it's only when they hit about 18, 19 that they start getting arrested. They used to be arrested as a minor for prostitution. Now they might get picked up. They're sent back home. You said, do they still live at home? Sometimes they do. They're running away. They're with this guy. They go back home. They run away again. But nowadays, when they're 18, 19, they don't know that there's another option for them. So our outreach teams, we have an outreach program, and they will run after a girl and say, hey, do you know what? There's more. Like, mm -hmm. we can give you, there's so much more. Mm -hmm. And it'll take sometimes two years. And often these same girls will go in and out of rehab centers because everyone's like, oh, they're just an addict. Mm -hmm. They don't even have an addiction. They are using to stay numb, to not think about what happens to them every day. Mm -hmm. 
So it's often after two, three years, they'll finally give us a chance and come That's and a long start. Time. Yeah. Can you imagine? But you're fighting for an identity. Mm -hmm. You're fighting for an entire destiny. So mm -hmm. every girl, like when I, I'm leaving here and I'm leading a book group mm -hmm. at one of our safe homes, mm -hmm. and one of the girls, they, they are like, well, I just can't believe I'm worth all this. This is the most amazing home. This is amazing. And I said, well, think about the odds. There's all these hundreds of thousands of girls out there, you must have an amazing destiny that you made it here, that we fought for you to know your worth. Because think how, about that. How long are they usually in one of your homes? They will come in for, we have first stage home because like domestic violence or anything that's sort of, you know, a, mm -hmm. a messy, confusing, it's seven to eight points of intervention before someone will even really stay and receive mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. And then if they do decide to stay, we have a main campus and at the main campus they usually will journey one to three years because it's staged really? housing. And think about it, they've had nothing since they were 12. They need their, they get their, 100% get their God GED. for you and the people who support you. Yeah, we've made partnerships with colleges so that, because they used to be arrested and three misdemeanor prostitution arrest would equal a felony. So we'll get an 18 year old with 18 felonies. She can't go to school, she can't get a job because you have mm -hmm. to check felon. So we've created one of the first prostitution court diversion programs in the country. So these girls get their records expunged and they're able to have that, that box unchecked. But in the meantime, they still need to go to college. So we've made partnerships with colleges, employers, Praise so they the can Lord. work and go to school while the law is getting everything in order. Mm -hmm. Yes, and they are, thank God, as I mentioned a couple times, from the White House to the State House. Mm -hmm. And uh, this lady's been ahead of all of those. And, uh, but it seems like God's moving quickly on this. He's moving quickly. I mean, I, I never talk about funding, but we would, we need so much help because you wouldn't believe exponentially. Everybody's finally now starting to understand what's happening. Mm -hmm. So keeping up with the services, mm -hmm. educating the kids, K through 12 has to be educated. Yes. We need a lot of workers. And that, that website's on your screen. There's people who could give big amounts of money because it costs a lot. If you, if you keep a, a girl two or three years, <laughs> yeah, no cost I mean, to we've that. all had children. They're expensive. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I want you to think about that because I really believe that it's almost like the Lord's starting a revival uh, when you take it from what she's done locally through Tallahassee, which is our capital city, and then on to uh, Washington, D.C. My heart's full of thanksgiving because yeah. I've kind of watched this ever yeah. since you were on. A lot of people don't know what human trafficking is, and uh, she is gradually kind of educating us. Again, the name of the book is Groomed, and I highly, highly recommend it uh, because it deals with so many levels of things that have happened to you and secrets that you keep. And uh, how, how would you describe the book? You know what, I, I always say, it's not a book about trafficking, mm -hmm. because people are like, I don't want to read a book about trafficking, and it's really not, and mm -hmm. that's it, and it really isn't, right? I mean, you invited me because it's a double-edged, I, I mm -hmm. can hit both of those topics, but the book is about, it's really for women, it's for adults. I have a male friend of mine in Chicago, he's an attorney, and he read it, and each chapter he read, he said, I wish my mom was alive. It's helping me process. It's taking back the messages. It's saying that, yes, girls were groomed to get into trafficking, perhaps, but we were all groomed in some way. And mm -hmm. who are the traffickers in your own life mm -hmm. that put the messages in, that groomed you, and you're in places now that maybe you're ready. Mm -hmm. You know, it might take somebody mm -hmm. coercing mm -hmm. you to look at, oh my gosh, I am groomed mm -hmm. to be invisible. And why don't I speak up? And what is that about? And just, it's the year of 2020. It's the year of perfect vision and clarity. I think this book is an empowering, taking back all the pieces that have been stolen from our God-given destinies, because mm -hmm. we all need to take our full place and our full platform right now. And she has uh, she has her, her own story in here, mm -hmm. and you can see what a great personality she is, and um, the great work she's doing. And we got to hurry up with this because she's got to call Washington D.C. in a few minutes. <laughs> this is getting exciting. But when you read this book, you know that wasn't Satan's plan for. He, oh yeah! Oh, he that, he, he had a great arm, right? plan for you. Oh, I know. And uh, he was executing it for quite a while. Yes, but. I always say the places in the book. It's into that. What are your wounds? And if you're mm -hmm. still not comfortable talking about your wounds, mm -hmm. if you have secrets, if there's grief that you haven't been able to work through, if there's secrets of things, mm -hmm. not sexual, anything, any mm -hmm. loss that has happened, mm -hmm. and this helps bring up what those are because. We have to step into those because I can guarantee you, you know, mm -hmm. the places we're attacked 
are the very places we are supposed to have a platform and supposed to be there exactly. to advocate for others. So it's empowering. Very well said. And we, we are out of time. And I still didn't get to all my notes <laughs> I made for your book. Um, will you come back again? I okay. would love okay. to. <laughs> Stay there. I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. I guess you can see why I kind of twisted her arm to stay with me for another interview, and I'm sure that's not the last one. But when you think of the plague of human trafficking and then all the other things we're going through with the coronavirus and all, I was thinking of a song that I think I learned as a teenager, and that is, in times like these, we need a savior. Times like these, we need an anchor. So be very sure, <clears throat> be very sure your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. This rock is Jesus. He's the one. This rock is Jesus, the only one. Be very sure. Be very sure. Your anchor holds and grips the solid rock. I just wonder how many people across the United States today were living in very troubled times. And, and they went to Sunday school when they were little, you know, they were a kid. But they found better things to do than to just get busy to walk with the Lord. And these kind of things should give you pause and cause you to think of that God that you studied in Sunday school. And that God in the Bible who over and over, I understand about 365 times said, fear not. Do you know him? Because I think those who know him are sleeping just fine at night. But there's a lot of anxiety going on and everything's in an upheaval. But be very sure. Be very sure. Where your anch the anchor of your life is, the anchor for your family is, make sure it's that solid rock, Christ Jesus because the Bible tells us that very distressful times will come in the end times, and we're living in those right now, but you don't need to fear. And I hope you'll join me next time. Please remembering there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.